If you can master flip zones, you will be able to trade with the smart money, capitalize on high probability moves, and have a mechanical method to enter the same way every single time. And this is absolutely crucial so that you can just execute like a robot without emotional interference sabotaging your results. So I'm gonna share some absolutely critical points that most people just get completely wrong with this concept. So in this video, we're gonna cover what are institutional flip zones, how to identify and draw them, how to use liquidity concepts to avoid these smart money traps, and finally, how to trade high probability flip zones. I'm gonna go through loads of trade examples with full bar replay walkthroughs. My name is Matt Donlevy, and I am the founder of Photon Trading, and we have now helped countless of traders not only get funded, but actually bank consistent profit splits using the power of mechanical strategies. Smart money, institutions, BFIs, whatever name you wanna throw on it, every single rule and every single confluence that I use in my trade plan it's based on trying to show me and signal where big money is either entering or exiting the market. Everything I'm trying to do is based around this single premise. So I'm gonna hop on the charts now and show you a very effective way of how to do this. So very simply, supply and demand zones are ways for us to identify where big money has entered and exited the market. But obviously not every supply and demand zone is equal only some are actually gonna signal that institutional involvement. So the very simplest and effective filter we have been looking at is looking for zones that actually lead to a break of structure because it takes a significant amount of money in order to achieve that, okay? So for instance, if you have price making higher highs and higher lows, price then breaks that low, we get a break of structure. Where is the supply that caused that? Here it is. That should be a decent move or a decent supply zone for us to look to trade from. Likewise, here is a demand zone that led to what? It led to a break of structure. So that's one very simple and effective filter. But today we are gonna look at supply and demand flip zones, okay? So they are very, very similar, except here how you see price just trades straight through demand. So there's a, there is a demand zone here, right? This demand zone broke that high. So technically it meets that institutional filter of breaking structure. But when price returns to it, it just smashes straight through, right? There's literally no reaction, okay? So that is not a flip zone. This is a similar scenario, but there is a flip zone, okay? So let's talk through it. We have price making higher highs, right? This demand zone here does what? It breaks structure, it breaks highs. So it is a significant demand zone, right? It broke structure. Now, when price returns to that demand zone, what should that demand do if it is gonna do its job? It should go on to make another high, right? There should be enough demand within there to form a higher high. But what happens when price returns to it? It reacts, okay, and now the reaction is key. This is what most people miss. You need to see a reaction. Why? Because it validates this zone. It shows that there is demand in that zone, that when those orders are filled, price does move a little bit to the upside, it tries to. But then what fails to happen is it fails to do its job. It fails to make a higher high. Why? Because supply steps in, overpowers demand, and it takes control and pushes price to the downside, and that's where we get an FR, which is a failed reaction, okay? So very, very simply, price comes into demand, it fails to do its job, it fails to put in a higher high, and then supply steps over, okay? So think about it as a battle. There's a wall that goes on here, demand steps in, but boom, big money, big supply, overpowers demand, right? Think of it as that battle and supply wins. So what does that show us? It shows us a very good signal that that's where supplies enter the market. So when price returns to it, we can look to sell from there. Okay, so demand flips to supply. Exact opposite for supply to demand flips, where we have a valid supply zone that broke structure. So when price comes into it, what do we expect? We expect price to make a lower low. It reacts, remember the reaction is key. We must see that to show that there is actually some supply in there. When those orders are mitigated, we see a bit of a reaction. But then what happens? Demand steps in. An overwhelming amount of demand steps in, overpowers supply, breaks structure. And when we get the break above the reaction point, we get that failed reaction confirming that supply has flipped to demand and then we look for price to return back into there. Okay, super simple, super powerful. Let's look at a few examples. Okay, so here we have a demand zone that clearly broke structure. So we can say that there was likely institutional involvement in the creation of that demand zone. So let's see what happens when price returns back to the zone. So we get a mitigation of the zone. Then what happens next? Price reacts from the zone, okay? So we're starting to see, you know, those, that demand being filled. Remember the reaction is key. So what we can do is we can mark the low of that reaction 
and that will be our failed reaction line okay so we want to see if price is going to close below there so let's play price forward see what happens now we get that failed reaction okay so price has come into demand it's failed to put in a higher high it's failed to do its job and supply has stepped into the market to overpower demand okay so you draw your flip zone from the low of the reaction okay this is where the reaction starts to the top of the reaction and that whole box that area is where supply came into the market to overpower this demand zone okay so that would be your demand to supply flip range but of course if you want you can refine it to the single candle pivot you know within it okay that is down to you but essentially that is the mechanics of how this interaction occurs okay so you have demand flipping to supply and here what do we have we have a supply zone that led to a break of structure so what happens when a price turns to the supply zone we get a reaction okay remember the reaction is key but we need to see what happens next is supply going to do its job and make a lower low or is demand going to step into the market and overpower supply and what you can do is you can mark your reaction line and wait to see what happens next so we play price forward and then we get the break and close above that high okay so whether you use wick breaks for fail reactions or candle closes is up to you i personally use candle closes so now supply has flipped to demand you can fly you can draw your uh supply to demand flip range from the top of the reaction okay so where the reaction starts down to the bottom of the reaction and then that is your entire range okay and that is where demand has stepped in to overpower supply and off we go okay so very very simple concept very 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 powerful because it shows that interaction between buyers and sellers and where one overpowers the other now before we hop into a ton of trade examples something you need to realize is that sometimes flips can be traps okay so in both of these examples it's essentially the exact same price action but in the example on the left we get the supply to demand flip and price is respected and this exact same example we get that flip but it's a trap price breaks below it mitigates the extreme zone instead and is respected okay so what can be a reasoning why this happens and it comes down to liquidity okay because in these diagrams the only difference between them is that the flip on the left swept some liquidity when it was formed okay so essentially I'm not going to go massively in, uh, in depth into liquidity in this video but if you think about it what do institutions need to enter the market they need opposing liquidity right if you're buying you need a ton of sellers to buy against right so if you see a zone sweep liquidity when it's formed that often signals that there was institutional involvement in the creation of that zone okay so in this example on the left the flip swept liquidity swept the liquidity below that low and that signals that bfis likely got long from there okay so you have the supply zone price comes into supply it reacts it sweeps some liquidity supply fails to put in a lower low okay and then demand steps into the market okay so from the top of the reaction to the bottom of the reaction that is your supply to demand flip range but of course you can refine it to you know a single candle or a pivot within that and because it swept liquidity this can increase the probability that it will be respected okay because sweeps show that there was likely bfi involvement that they used the sell side liquidity below that low in order to get long same example here except it doesn't sweep right so price comes into supply reacts fails to put a lower low so we do get a valid flip but in this example there's no sweep of a low within here okay and that can very often be a trap because there's you know, no liquidity taken in here so the only available liquidity is below the low itself and that's where the BFIs can use that sell side liquidity below that low in order to get long, okay? So to give you a bit of a simple rule that you can use to try and help it make it nice and mechanical if you're not sure whether you should take the flip or whether you should take the extreme zone below is this, and you just ask yourself, does the flip sweep liquidity? If it does flip, then you take the flip, okay? So here we get the reaction to supply, but it sweeps that low and then we go, so you can take the flip zone, okay? Because it sweeps liquidity. If it doesn't sweep liquidity, well, then you ignore the flip and you enter on the extreme. Okay, so here we get the reaction from supply. Price pushes up, but there was no sweep when that flip forms. So you don't enter on the flip, you enter on the extreme. Okay, so that's a very, very simple rule that can help you be mechanical and potentially improve your strike rate. But what I will say is I do not personally use this rule. Okay, and I've never been strict with this rule 
because what I would often find, especially on Euro dollar, which is the main pair that I trade, is very often the flip may not sweep and it will still be respected, okay? So I now finally have found the answer to that and I now have a much more in-depth entry model uh, based on the quality concepts that I use that allows me to know what to do in every single scenario. It is 100% mechanical, like you could literally code the entry model. Um, so we're not gonna get into those now because be gonna, it's gonna be a much more in-depth video. So subscribe if you wanna see that. If you don't wanna wait for that and you want those exact in-depth, 100% mechanical liquidity entry models, then come and join us in Photon and we literally hand you our exact mechanical trade plan and you can get all of those. Um, and it's been an absolute game changer, like the, the amount of people that are getting funded and getting insane results and just clarity and, and calmness in the community now is ridiculous. But yeah, I won't plug anymore. It's there if you want it, but here is a very solid rule that will help you get going and remove that decision fatigue when you're not quite sure whether you should take the flip or take the extreme when you have sort of two unmitigated POIs. Okay, let's go and look at some trade examples. So here is your dollar on the daily chart. And as we can see, we have got quite clear bearish swing structure. Now, when we got this last bearish boss down here, we pull back up to our level of supply. Now it's institutional supply. Why? Because it broke strong uh, structure and it actually broke swing structure. So we know that's quite a strong level of supply. But what happens when price mitigates it? It reacts. Remember, the reaction is key. But what does that reaction do? That reaction fails to put in a lower low. It fails to break swing structure. Why? Because demand steps into the market and overpowers supply. Demand wins that battle. So where did demand step in? Well, it's anywhere from the top of the reaction, remember, all the way down to the bottom of the reaction. So anywhere between those two orange lines is your big supply to demand flip range. But obviously that's quite a big range. We wanna be a bit more refined. So you can look for the single candle pivot within that. Well, that's where I always go and look at the extreme of the reaction leg, because typically that's highest probability. But in this case, we can see up here, by the time we get the felt reaction, that zone is already mitigated when we're looking back of like, where can we get in long? Okay, so this is obviously are our mitigated extreme now and gives a very high probable level to look for another bullish move to the upside, okay? So we had supply, fails to put in a lower low, demand steps into the market. We only confirm that once we get a candle closure above that failed reaction line, look for the demand, boom, there we go, there's your trade, okay? Now, when structure shifts bullish here, when order flow is bullish, structure is bullish, what do all the demand zones, sorry, supply zones to the left become? They just become reaction points for pullbacks. And what you will very often see in that moment is we get the reaction points for the pullbacks, but then usually they get flipped and it's those flips that then provide those continuations for the bullish move to keep continuing. So what do I mean by that? Well, a good example was here, right? We come up to supply, reacts, provides a level of demand for us to push through, okay? So we come up here, old level of supply here, we've reacted from it, failed to put in a lower low, got the closure above the reaction line. So potentially this can become the continuation for the next bullish leg to the upside, okay? Just like here, right? Got a reaction to demand, that reaction failed to put in a higher high, supply overpowered demand, and then we've, when we've returned to it, there's your supply zone. But at that point, structure's bullish, right? So we're only expecting a reaction and a push up. So you can just see how that, that interaction, that battle between supply and demand, sometimes you can go really far back and, and paint a full story. Uh, and it's super sort of, you know, I find it interesting to see how you can see the um, exchange in order flow going on there, okay? So here, at least from a daily perspective, is a higher probable area, this supply to demand flip, to look for a possible continuation of that bullish structure and of that bullish order flow. So let's jump down to the four hour chart and see if we can look to try and trade it. So if I draw on our last four hour piece of structure, let's keep it nice and simple, All right? That was our last four hour break. As you can see, right, we had a swing pullback, swing higher high, and then this is now our strong four hour swing low within our daily supply to demand flip, okay? In simple terms, we expect this four hour strong low to hold for price to pull back into this demand zone and then we can potentially look for continuations if that bullish trend is gonna continue, this is a high probable point. So let's look for four hour demand zones in where we can potentially look for that long trade. What I always like to do is go straight away to the extreme, where is our strong swing low? Because that's always gonna be the highest probable area to look for that trend to continue because if you're wrong, well, you're only, wrong, you're only wrong once, right? Because then the trend is gonna switch bearish. So this level has to hold if that four hour swing trend is gonna continue bullish, okay? So that's one level there. Now, 
Obviously, this is an institutional zone by our criteria because it leads to a swing break of structure. Happy days. That's the first thing you should look for. Then what you should do in step two is ask yourself, is it a flip zone? And how do you determine that? Because sometimes it's not very obvious. Well, what you do is you look for where did the pullback of this zone start? So it starts up here, right? That's the pullback of this leg and that's where we go. So that's where the reaction started. And then you look left and you ask, did that, is price reacting from an unmitigated supply zone to the left? So if we go and look, what do we have? We have a nice four hour zone that was fresh and unmitigated, okay? So essentially what that means is we have a valid four hour institutional zone here, right? Because obviously this is where supply came into the market that led to a break of structure. So if we drag that supply zone all the way to the right, what do we have? That's where price reacted from there, okay? So price comes into that uh, institutional supply zone. It fills up those orders, right? Remember the reaction is key because it validates that it was somewhat of a significant supply zone. Then what happens to the reaction? The reaction pushes down, but we never break any structure, right? We never break any low, so supply fails to do its job. And then what happens? Demand steps into the market, okay? So technically, anywhere from the top of the reaction to the bottom of the reaction, that is your entire supply to demand range, but obviously that's quite big. So we want to refine it to the pivot zones within that. And that's why I was saying I always look for the extreme first and there's the extreme of the reaction leg. Nice uh, level, which happens to be the four hour swing low, okay? Swept liquidity, has inducement, really, really nice level. Now there's one more other level that I can see that's unmitigated and it's this level here, okay? This is a lot lower probability. It's obviously not the extreme. We have a ton of sell side liquidity just sitting below there and we have no inducement in the leg. So this looks very much like a trap, but let's see what happens when price comes down. Potentially we may get a reaction. So let's jump down to 15 and let's use the 15 as our execution time frame. And trading view has done what it loves to do to me, which is not appear the zones, not make the zones appear on the time frame that I need them to, but hopefully it should now. So yeah, let's we've got a mitigation of our four hour demand zone. We're looking to capture that four hour higher low. Okay, and let's see how it goes. So price ends up trading through the zone. That's not really too surprising because like I said, there was no inducement and there was tons of sell side liquidity sitting below. So let's see if we push down lower to our next four hour demand zone or not. Okay, well, price is pushing up. So what's probably now happening here is if we look left, price is sweeping the liquidity, right? Below that low, mitigated some lower demand and now potentially we can trade a sweep of that level. So if we look at the M15, what do we have? Well, we have our shift in structure. Okay, so at least now we have structure on our side. Okay, can we look for an institutional demand zone to get long? Well, yeah, we have demand zones that obviously led to a break of structure. So if we look at the extreme, that, that one's already mitigated. If we look at the next level, this candle's already mitigated. And if we look at this next level, this one is unmitigated, right? So potentially we can look to long from here. And remember I said, once you've identified an institutional zone that led to a break of structure, the next thing you can ask yourself is, is it a flip zone? How do you know if it's a flip zone? You look for the start of the pullback of where the zone formed, which is here, look left. Are we reacting, supposed to be an arrow, <laughs> are we reacting from an unmitigated level of supply, right? A strong level of supply. Yes, we have this level of supply here, okay? Is it a valid supply zone? Yes, it led to the break of that low there, okay? So that supply zone led to a break of structure. When price comes back to it, it should do what? It should make a lower low. But what happens? We get the reaction. And remember, the reaction is key. We need to see a reaction. And then what happens? Demand overpowers supply, takes control, leads to that break of structure. So now we have even more confluence to suggest institutional involvement in the creation of the zone, that this is where that big money stepped in to overpower supply and led to a break of structure. It's following a series of mitigations. This is looking very high probable to take an M15 entry. So let's be conservative. I'm not gonna go into entry refinements here and let's just take um, that entry on top. Now, because we have calls for lower prices on the four hour chart, right, we can just trade a quick reaction. I'm not gonna go into super depth on structure and everything here, but we're obviously bearish on the M15. So we can just do a quick 5R set and forget okay and see if we can get in and out of this position so price pays forward to be patient get tagged into the trade set and forget and we get another movement here up towards the highs eventually and we get 
taken out okay so there you go there is your 5r now like i said if we go back to the 4r chart what we're we expecting we can see here um if i just delete that because it's we're almost in the way that potentially we may be coming down for lower prices okay so we can look for potential shorts to capture one next internal leg down towards extreme before potentially that swing high low may form okay so let's keep an eye out and see if we can see some shorts so let's pay price forward what do we get moving down okay so now it's a bit subtle but you can see here where we have a shift in m15 fractal structure where we get a break of that low and here you can see we have a valid supply zone that led to the break of that level so here we draw our supply across here's a valid zone so led to a break of structure not the most significant just fractal is it a flip zone well that's where the pullback started from look left what are we reacting from we're reacting from a valid demand zone here okay so if we draw that zone across prices come into demand reacted and pushed down okay so now we have a demand to supply flip and what's also nice is we swept some liquidity in here so let's see if we can take this entry okay again could do more refinements and everything but i'm just trying to keep this nice and simple just for the sake of the video and you got 3r towards the low there okay so let's take the trade and we got subbed out no biggie is what it is okay so price shops around not really too interested in trading there and then eventually we get the move okay now actually as you can see here i've just noticed what do we get we get a sweep of liquidity we come into demand all right we react from demand demand flips to supply and then we come into that supply level and then we get a nice movement there to the downside okay but what we're really waiting for is for price to come into our extreme for our zone right because we know that's the highest level level to look to trade from so let's see how price action develops shopping around forming a bit more structure and then we come down let's see here could you look for a quick move we get a break of that low there okay so this becomes our strong high we already have the extreme supply mitigated here and then we've got this extreme level here so that's a valid zone obviously led to a break of structure is it a flip zone or look left what is it reacting from there is your demand right so now can you see that interaction between buyers and sellers that's your demand level that broke that high price comes into demand reacts fails to put in a high high leads to that break of structure so demand flips the supply there's your valid zone and that could have been a quick tidy entry there probably want to keep those highs covered just to the left and then target the weak low here for a quick 3.4 trade and then we come into our four hour zone okay so now got our four hour zone this is where we're looking for potentially that next bullish swing leg to occur from our daily flip zone and our four hour flip zone let's just be patient and wait for structures to shift so there we go right big mitigation sweep the liquidity below that low institutions have likely used the sell side liquidity below that low to get long cleared out all of the supply so now we have a high probable area to get long um is this a flip zone not really because we haven't really reacted from any supply i mean arguably you could say we're reacting from the range but nothing there so for those of you who like to enter on the lower time frames too let's take a quick look and see if we can play an m1 reaction from this zone so we've got a nice refined m1 level within here all right this demand let's see how price reacts let's see if we form anything so we come in um let's see and then we push up so what do we have we have our m1 shift in structure where we get an m1 change of character okay because that candle fails to break the previous candles low so that is a fractal pullback you can see price pulls back comes down and we come up now what can you notice yes we have demand that led to a break of structure okay that one is already mitigated so then you can refine it to the next candle so we know it's somewhat of an institutional zone right it broke some structure how do we know if it's a flip zone well what do we react from where's the start of the reaction there it is look left what do we have do we have a valid supply zone yes that is an m1 uh, supply zone that led to a break of that low okay so you can see supply led to a break of that low so it's a valid supply zone price comes into supply it reacts remember the reaction is key price then fails to put a lower low supply fails to do its job and that's where demand steps into the market okay so how do you draw your supply to demand um flip well you draw it from the top of the reaction which starts here down to the bottom of the reaction okay so just delete the one we drew 
And that is your supply to demand flip range. Of course, you can refine it if you wish. And there you go. And then that's your M1 entry, depending on how conservative you want to be, cover the low, maybe you want to be a bit more refined. Um, and yeah, there's your trade. And you're off to the races, okay? Now, technically, because of where we are within the higher time frames, so this is the move we were just looking at. Remember, this is our strong swing low, right? We took an initial trade around in this area. We took a quick long to try to play that internal pullback into supply. Then we tried to take a short, just got stopped out. There was another short within here, could have taken a quick scalp. But this is really the trade you want to be focusing on, okay? Into the extreme, we waited for them 15 to shift in our favor. You could have just taken an M15 entry, but what do we do? We waited for price to mitigate on the M1. Quickly show you again, right? There's your M15 zone down here, price mitigates it. Want a bit more refinement. There's your M1, right? Wait for price to mitigate it. Same thing, wait for structure to shift, wait for supply to flip to demand. That's your interaction. You can see the big money and there we go. Price is fractal. The same thing happens on every single time frame. But the point I was gonna make about management is if you want to hold those trades, you like those big RR things, whatever floats your boat, these are the times you can do it. And it makes sense to do it because you have logic and reason because this is the low that needs to hold if you're now gonna target that weak high and you can hold on to your trades. I'm personally not in the business of trying to <laughs> swing for the fences with positions. I'm more make your profit back and move on, capture little parts of each phase of the market, but that is the one time that can do it. I'm a much bigger fan of paying yourself with consistent profits. So I hope you took some value from that. If you wanna get our liquidity entry models in depth, give us a look. If not, take a look at this next video where we're gonna see the five mistakes that most people make. If it isn't live yet, hit the subscribe button uh, so you don't miss out.